All right, well, before we get started, I just wanted to say that we're really grateful for the opportunity we have to share with you guys what we've been able to come up with in this last month of our senior process control project. And as senior chemical engineers, I feel like we have gained over these past four years quite a few um, really useful and really great skills to, to better the world. And before you go to sleep thinking that this is a chemical engineer senior project, um, I know you might be concerned it'll be a little bit boring that we're going to build you a heat exchanger or something like that. We decided to use our skills or expertise to um, make something that would actually help the normal person in his everyday life. And so we decided to come up with a jacket that could maintain an ideal body temperature. So being from Canada um, and spending most of my college career in Utah, I can tell you how much I appreciate the warmth and being able to maintain a, a body temperature. And so we decided to develop a temperature controlled jacket that maintained um, your body temperature at its ideal temperature, um, particularly for exercising or going outdoors. And, and I love to run. Um, and I can tell you that such a jacket would benefit me so much. It would um, motivate me to go running more. It would add to my comfort and my enjoyment while I ran. And it also, um, also uh, en enhance my performance. And I feel like that's the case for most athletes. All right, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about our jacket design. Um, so as you can see, we have some heating coils in between uh, 0.5 inches of down. Um, and that's what's going to heat up your body. And then we also have some vents um, that are going to open when you want to cool down your body, uh, when your body is providing more heat due to exertion. Uh, and we also have a thermocouple in the armpit of the jacket to measure your body temperature. All right, so we just started with the standard energy balance and our controlled variable is our body temperature. Um, and, and as you can see that, um, Body temperature is dependent on the Q supplied uh, by the heating coils, the Q supplied by the body, and three different overall heat transfer coefficients. Um, one with the interaction of the outside air um, with your jacket and then with your skin, one for the open vents where it's just convection with the outside air and your skin, and one for uh, the openings like uh, your neck hole and your armholes and whatnot and we just linearize that uh, energy balance and we're able to come up with four different uh, transfer functions so our our manipulated variables where were our area of the vents and our Q supplied by uh, the coils and then um, our disturbances were the outside temperature air and then also um, the heat supplied by the body and we made a couple assumptions uh, that come with linearizing. We assume some steady state values, and then we also um, we also assume that there's no convection in between your skin and the inside air of the jacket. We assumed that the jacket was right on your skin. Okay, so once we had those four uh, transfer functions, we were able to build those into a Simulink control diagram um, to model how the human body's temperature would change with those four different things. Um, Early on in the, in the project, we realized that we weren't going to be able to use just a normal PI controller that comes standard with Simulink. Um, and so with a little help from Dr. Hedengren and with a lot of work from ourselves, we were able to come up with a custom S-block function that would allow us to, uh, it was logic-based, that would allow us to send different signals um, at different times to the coils versus the vents, depending on whether the body was overheating or cooling off too quickly. Um, after we had that built, we needed a way to measure how well our system was working, measure how well the jacket actually performed. And so we thought it would be a cool thing to put it to the test on an actual run, or I guess a simulated actual run. And so right here in the corner is a run that I, I like to do here in Provo that starts down by Brick Oven and it goes up the hill towards campus and then it goes over towards Y Mountain and up the big hill over there. And so this run had a couple different changes in elevation and so that would affect, or that would be a disturbance in body output heat. And then we also added in a couple disturbances that had the simulated weather changes. So say the sun came out at around 10 minutes, it would heat up the, heat up the outside air by five degrees. And then after another, at the 20 minutes into the run, maybe a storm rolls in and it drops the temperature about 10 degrees. And so we had that simulated run and we used that modeled with our jacket and these are the results we got. There's a graph showing the 
results of that particular scenario shows the deviation of the body temperature from standard, the degree to which the vents open, and how much power is put in through the heating coils. As you can see, when the as the body temperature rises, the vents the, the vents open to cool it back down. If the body temperature lowers be below normal, the vents close and the heating coils kick on to warm you back up. Um, found that the uh, largest deviation we got was about 0.4 54 degrees Celsius, which is really excellent. It generally takes about a full degree Celsius from no from normal for you to feel any discomfort. So and it settled within in less than nine minutes. So the jacket is can keep you comfortable through a variety of env of environments. So that's our project. Thank you for your time.